The Tesla haters continue their rampage despite the overwhelming success story that is Tesla. You know, if you look at the facts, it's really objective that what they've been able to do is remarkable. And in an interview recently, former Facebook executive and now venture capitalist Shamath Palihapitiya gave some really good kind of details and some strong defense against this story and why people are hating on it. But if you didn't know the context behind that story and those details, you might have missed it. There was a moment particularly in the interview that caught my eye. If you take a five year step back, and say, what has he promised in 2014 to what is he doing in 2019, you'd be ecstatic. So let's do just that. Let's take a step back from the kind of laser focused micro news that comes out every five minutes about Tesla and see what they've been able to do in their short lifespan. To start, we really need to jump back to the Tesla master plan. Part one of the master plan was to create a low volume car which would necessarily be expensive. This was the Tesla Roadster and it basically was a modified Lotus Elise chassis that was converted to being electric and proved to be incredibly difficult to do. But they did it anyways, painfully and slowly, and against all odds, despite everyone thinking it was a dumb idea, or as Elon put it, there was a time when electric cars seemed very stupid. Um, and, and it wasn't that long ago. And the, the idea of creating a car company was stupid, of course. Um, and then making an electric car company was like stupidity squared. And despite all that, they succeeded at delivering the original Tesla Roadster. Celebrities all bought it, the entire world was convinced that EVs were the way of the future, and now we laugh at thinking that there were once gas cars. Okay, right, that, that, that last part was a joke. I was seeing if you were you're still with me. Sadly, the EV hate continued, but it didn't really stop Tesla. They just kept trucking along and going on to step two of their master plan, which was to create a medium volume car at a lower price. In walks the Model S, codenamed White Star. The Model S is Tesla's luxury sedan and current flagship vehicle with a range of 370 miles, the second safest car ever tested, only behind the Tesla Model 3, and a zero to 60 time of 2.4 seconds, which is one tenth behind the Porsche 918 Spyder, which will run you a cool two plus million dollars. And even with all those amazing specs and what we know of the Model S today, the media at the time didn't really receive it as well as you may have imagined. Notably, the LA Times Dan Neal, who's now with the Wall Street Journal, called the Model S more of a glorified golf cart than a harbinger of tomorrow's tech. Since then, the Model S has racked up countless awards and is currently the most selling Tesla on the streets, and in my opinion, the best looking of the lineup. To be fair, what the media saw at the time of the unveiling of the original Model S isn't anything like what it is today. I mean, maybe it's somewhat similar, but clearly there's been a lot of advancements since that original version was rolled out. And I actually spoke to Dan Neal, the guy that called it a glorified golf cart. And he, you know, at the time, the way he explained it to me, he said that they didn't really think Tesla had any advantage, any, any unique technologies or things that really set them apart above the other automakers. And obviously that's a different story today as we learned over the years and as these cars have continued to progress and really just outpace the innovation of all the other automakers. And Dan even admitted and said that, you know, Elon will deliver on what he says. He, he over promises and over delivers, just not on time. And I think that's a fair criticism, one that I assume Elon would probably agree with. This leads us to step three in Tesla's master plan to create an affordable high volume car. This of course is the Tesla Model E. Huh? We, we're going to get sued. Uh, the, uh, the, the, what are they? The Tesla Model 3, that's what I said, not the E, it's, it's the 3, it's the 3. Codename Blue Star, the Tesla Model 3 is Tesla's mass market option with a starting price of just under $40,000 in the United States, but a five year cost better than a Honda Accord, meaning the maintenance and everything else really make this car just a, a tremendous value in terms of your bang for your buck. Now the range on this is over 310 miles. I've tested it, I haven't quite got 310, but still it's a, a lot of miles, that's more than you typically would need. And a zero to 60 time on the performance model of 
3.2 seconds. And of course, one of the biggest things is that this is the safest vehicle that NHTSA in the United States has ever tested. But more importantly, as Shamath put it, It doesn't change that the minute you sit inside that car, your definition of what is expected is altered forever. And you wonder why every other car around you that you ever step in, that you may buy, doesn't have the same things that that car offers. And again, the media continued to bash them for being late, for quality issues, for just countless things. But despite all that, they continued to succeed. For example, the Model 3 was in the top five best-selling passenger vehicles in Q4 2018 in the United States and was the number one top-selling car from an American car company for 2018, despite volume deliveries only really ticking up towards the middle of the year. Let me just pause on this for a second because of the top five selling cars, not trucks and SUVs, this Tesla's Model 3 was the only one by an American auto company. So there's also this weird thing out there that people hate on Teslas because it's not American for some reason. They are the most American car company where 100% of their vehicles are assembled here in the United States, the only car company in California. So this is like just, just a big deal because the U.S. auto sector was such a big part of the economy and the culture of like, you know, of, of what it meant to be American. And they have clearly fallen way off to the likes of Honda and Toyota and Nissan and, you know, the German brands. So anyone that really thinks that, you know, you want to be a good American should be totally supportive of Tesla because they literally are the only ones in the top five selling passenger vehicles in the United States. It's kind of crazy that they're even able to do that, despite the fact that this is the only electric car that is selling even close to this volume anywhere in the world. The Model 3 added so many Teslas to the road that it almost doubled the entire fleet in 2018 alone, meaning they grew in terms of vehicles on the road by roughly 100% year over year. In addition, Tesla sold more Model 3s in Q1 of 2019 than all of the other cars in its class did in 2018. Let me repeat that. In one quarter in 2019, where the volume of Tesla sales was lower than previous quarters, they delivered more Model 3s than all of their competitors did for the entire previous year. So you can just imagine what 2019 is going to look like when the dust settles and we can see how the Model 3 did compared to its peers. And a quick note about that, sometimes people don't like that chart that I show because they don't think that those cars are in the Tesla Model 3 class. This is something that the EPA specifies. This isn't something I just made up. So those are its actual competitors, despite what people's perception might be. So that's where that comes from. I didn't just kind of pick those to make that story look better. This is the actual data that is coming out of the EPA. So it's not something that, you know, we're just kind of going to fudge. Now, if you want to change that to fit a different narrative, well, people can do what they want, I guess. But if you really want to just look at the data, there it is for you. So as Shamath said, they can't make these cars fast enough. People are literally lining up to get them. And now that they're shipping to Asia and Europe, and now they just opened up orders for the right-hand drive countries, it's kind of a worldwide phenomenon. The Model 3 is really taking over, and it's eating into all of the profits and sales of all the other automakers that have cars even remotely close to what this one is able to offer. And then now, things have changed. Yeah. The, the, the goal of Tesla was literally this, is like, to what degree, in fact, you know, when we created it, we're like, okay, the fundamental historic good of Tesla should be measured by the degree to which we accelerate the advent of sustainable, uh, sustainable energy and transport. Um, and our goal all along has been to try to get the rest of the car industry to, uh, to go electric. We did a, a, a joint venture thing with, uh, with Toyota and with Mercedes. Um, we, we open sourced our patents uh, three or four years ago, um, made, them, made them freely available. Um, and uh, so it's, it's ex extremely rewarding to see that the, the rest of the industry is going electric. This is great, great. <laughs>
Now, short sellers uh, who, again, have a financial interest in Tesla failing, so when they bring up stuff, notice there is a tremendous bias. If you're wondering about me, I have a zero uh, position in Tesla other than I own their vehicles and I want them to succeed because, you know, I like clean air and the planet and things like that. But when they, they bring up things like a, a low cash position on, on, on Tesla or re reduced demand, these kind of things, what they're pointing at are blips in the data. But again, what we're, we're trying to do here is take a step back to see what's going on because these short sellers are the same ones that have predicted Tesla's demise since the very beginning. Every year is the last year. This is it. Oh, next quarter, they're going under. And honestly, I think it's kind of crazy because there have been some other big developments which, which basically remedy all of the problems that they try to highlight. For example, Tesla now offers a lease option for the Model 3 for around $399, which is undoubtedly going to increase demand domestically and make it much more affordable for a lot more people. They've also raised $2.7 billion in cash to refill the uh, the bank account there, which was uh, depleted in large part to a $1 billion convertible bond payment back in Q1. So this is going to allow them to continue their expansion plans for all the new models coming out soon. But let's say the shorts are right. Let's say Tesla goes bankrupt, Elon leaves, just kind of worst case scenario. Let's play this out a little bit, uh, the, the kind of wet dreams of the short sellers. What do you think would really happen? I'll let Shamath tell it. The people who short this company are so short-sighted because the number of companies that would come out of the woodwork, you don't think that Apple with $200 billion of cash backstops this company and has a chance to enter a trillion dollar market overnight by buying that business if it gets imperiled in any way? Google, which already tried to buy it, wouldn't try to buy it again? I'd say it, it, it's a risk. So what are we betting against? We're betting against a cleaner earth because we don't like that. We like to suck in the carbon monoxide and the fumes from all these cars. We're betting against f beautiful flat screens, beautiful ways in which to manage your experience inside the car because we don't like that. No, we're betting Why? against whether he can deliver what he says, the fundamentals of the company. That's what they're well, betting the against. No, no, that's not true. People are betting against his style. They don't like his style. It's not it's just that. It I mean, is come on, there's that. people, there's smart people like Jim Chanos. He's a smart investor. He's not betting just on his style. Six, Jim Chanos makes money once a decade. And while the market rips up, the guy just bleeds money and he's never on CNBC. And every time something works, he's there for five minutes. Great for Jim Chanos. Fantastic as a hedge in a portfolio where you have 1% in a short fund. But the reality is being long equities makes sense. Being long innovation makes sense. Betting against entrepreneurs that are changing the world has never been a profitable endeavor. Why start now? I think Shamath nailed it here. And really the point, as he stated, is that you're betting against Elon's style. The short sellers, for whatever reason, are either more invested in the Tesla's competitors and then are, you know, intentionally trying to stir up negative media to push them down to, you know, better their clients' interests. This is capitalism. This is how it works. Um, but really the thing, if you step back and just try to look at it objectively, that people are, are upset about is Elon's style of accomplishing these things. Because as we've laid out here, it really is pretty objective that they've been able to succeed against all odds, despite the media, despite the shorts, despite suppliers and everyone else that's really trying to sabotage their progress. Tesla's mission is to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy. That includes electrifying transportation from sedans to semi-trucks. It includes providing solar solutions for your roof and for commercial installations that include utility scale battery backups. It includes inspiring others to get on board as we've seen with virtually all major automakers committing to going electric in the near future. And it includes changing our expectation for what a driving experience can be. So if you're with me, consider subscribing below as we follow the transformation that Tesla brings to our world by looking at the data and seeing what it means and trying to ignore all the hype and the noise that is surrounding a company that is doing such big things to make our world a better place. So thanks for watching. I hope I'll see you back here soon. And don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. Thanks for watching the video. Do you like data? Maybe you want to make a career out of it? Check out my free course at ftdacademy.com and kickstart your data professional career today.